All right, we're into module three. And uh, really looking forward to sharing this one because it's talking about how we're going to fill this void. We've just created an enormous void. Um, whenever we leave our religious idea, there's a huge space um, that needs to be filled. So I want to talk about, you know, where to go and what to do. And I want to also mention that we've already covered in Module 1 determining when it's time to leave and how to tune into that GPS. Um, in Module 2, we talked about um, preparing for that journey. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I wanted to just say just maybe just a little bit more about preparing for that journey. Um, there's a couple of things I wanted to bring out before we move into filling this void. But um, one thing I want to say is not only do you have the congregation against you and you have your family and you have all your friends that you've known, but you also have all the programming from the way they've interpreted the Bible to say that if you leave us, you've left God. If you leave the Watchtower, you left God's own organization. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and there's a lot of fear involved in leaving because they've programmed you to fail. Um, you're a dog returning to the mire. You're, you're an apostate um, and, and so many other things. You're truly bastardized um, when you leave this organization, most organizations. You're, you're blackballed, and uh, this makes it really hard. And so I just wanted to let you know that um, there's another thought I wanted to bring up about the fact that when you start questioning this organization, when you start wondering, you know, if this is the truth, you got to be careful within the ranks of the organization with the people that you know, your friends, because when you start talking about this thing, when you start talking about, I don't know if this is true anymore, if you start sharing with these people um, your heartfelt feelings, you're going to be shunned immediately. You might even be thrown out in your head. Um, my wife had something similar happen to her. They sent out an investigating community committee to, to listen to some of the conversations and to see where she was going to fellowship, and they kicked her out. And what I don't want to happen is you to be kicked out on your head without any forewarning. But these spiritual leaders make it really hard for you not to leave. I mean, when you talk about cutting you off, when you talk about, about putting you outside and not letting you have any kind of communication with anybody, they're really wanting you to stay. They're really making it so it's almost impossible for you to leave. But I assure you, it's not impossible. You will find a way to leave. But just be careful. Just be careful in how you go about leaving because you don't want to be out in your head and you don't want to be without resources if you're a young person and you're still living at home, you want to be real careful because this can be very hardcore. I mean, harder core, you know, teach you a lesson kind of hardcore. We're going to put him out and see how he does on his own, all right. And uh, if he wants to go back to Satan's world, then we'll show him. So be very careful. Be very careful, especially within the Kingdom Hall. I just wanted to finish this up. Be very careful. Watch who you talk to. Have a good friend outside and then move on from there. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So now we want to talk about uh, now we want to talk about how we fill the void. And I just want to say, try to tune into your heart. Really try to tune into your heart. There's nothing wrong with visiting several places. You may want to go to a charismatic, fundamentalist Christian church. You may want to see what it's like to be slain in the spirit. You might want to go. Wherever it is you want to go, you might want to go to a New Thought church. You might want to go to something like what Oprah talks about, um, science of mind, unity, um, some kind of spiritual uh, way, which is what I did. I went, uh, when I left the Jehovah's Witnesses, there's a saying that when you've been in a cult and you've been following for so long that you'll turn over your own rocks. You won't let anybody tell you where to go. In fact, if somebody tries to tell you where to go, you won't go because you're going to start making decisions for yourself. You broke out of that idea that somebody was going to make that decision for you. Somebody was going to tell you where to go and how to worship and all this stuff. You've already left all of that. So 
you're going to start turning your own rocks over. So all I can say in that regard is listen to your heart. Listen to where it's telling you to go. My God, it could tell you to do anything, you know. It could tell you not to go anywhere for five years or 20 years. It could say I'm done with religion. It could say be an atheist. I'm going to be an atheist. I don't even believe in God anymore. It could say go to the Christian church next door. Um, for me, I, I mean, I turned over every rock. I went off into science of mind, and then I went off into unity, which are really more spiritual uh, type churches. And then I started going down some of the Hindu stuff, some of the Buddhism. I learned a little bit about Buddhism, Hinduism. I was in Paramahansa Yogananda for about a year, sitting in the ashrams, um, meditating, praying, being in the silence. I went up to St. Benedict's Monastery. I did Lectio Divino, uh, sitting in silence with God. I started studying a multitude of books, The Cloud of Unknowing, um, St. Teresa of Avila, Meister Eckhart. Those are all Christian mystics. Um, I went down a lot of pathways. In Science of Mind, I was studying to be a practitioner. I took all their classes, Science of Mind 1, 2, 3, Self Mastery, on and on and on. And, and, and eventually I, I, I went for a little while and then I backed out. I said, you know what? I don't really want any men over me. I don't want anybody saying they're my minister, they're my whatever. So I began to pull out a science of mine. I don't want to be a product of Ernest Holmes. I don't want to be a product of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard. I don't want to be a par project of Mary Baker Eddy. Um, whoever it is, I, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't want any man authority over me. So... But that was my choice. So I went down a number of roads for a number of years. I was in Science of Mind probably 10 years and in Unity about the same amount of time, 10 years. I don't hate any of these places. I don't even hate the Jehovah's Witnesses. It was a place to land for a while and study the Bible and have fellowship and have some good people. But as I said, there came a time that I had to honor the small voice within myself, the core of who I was. I had to honor that and I had to move on. So I continued to follow that. It was like my light that I had to follow. So I went into the science of mind, and, you know, for me it was, they, they said I was made in God's image and likeness, and I was an idea in the mind of God before I came here, and that I was going to flourish and unfold into a beautiful person. And, and that was beauty to me, that, that I wasn't a throwaway, that I wasn't just a no-good sinner, that I wasn't a person that was just, you know, that it was a horrible man that... that that didn't deserve nothing but death. So I enjoyed the science of mind for a while. Then I went into unity and I found out about Christ, Christ in you, hope of glory, a lot of Paul's writings and, and that we're supposed to be filled with that, that Christ, that, that spiritual dimension that was in Christ. And, and then I, I, I enjoyed that for the longest time. And, and I still do enjoy it. And, and, and then I moved into so many other things. I wanted to see what the Eastern religions were like. I wanted to touch on them a little bit. I didn't get heavily involved in Buddhism. Some people do. Some people go right from witnesses into Buddhism, and that's where they stay the rest of their life. Zen Buddhism, Wang Pao Buddhism, on and on, whatever. Zen Buddhism, it goes on and on. Um, it's just more religion, but, but that's not my choice. But the point of it is, find something, go to a few places. I went to a half dozen places before I found the place where I was going to hang out. And... Uh, I let that place where I was at fill my soul. I let it feed me. I let it nourish me. I let it bring me back to wholeness to a certain level. And then there was a new idea, and I embraced it, and it brought me to a new level of wholeness. And I realized that, that, that I could drink from, from several places, and, and, and I would get nourished. And, and so I took it at that. And Fortunately, I realized for me that there wasn't an end place. It wasn't like this place that had the truth, that science of mind had all my truth, unity had all my truth. I, my soul was still hungering for this one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. That was what I wanted more than anything for me. That was my compass. That was my inner GPS. I want a, a relationship with God that feeds me, that guides me, that restores me, that that loves me unconditionally, that's patient with me. And so I just went out into all these other things and turned over the rocks and exhausted them. And like I said, I found a few places for myself to hang out for several years. 
and I enjoyed those communities as I did the Jehovah's Witness while I was in there, while I was enjoying that sort of honeymoon. I enjoyed some of the sciences. I enjoyed some of unity. I enjoyed uh, Christian mysticism. I enjoyed some of Paramahansa Yogananda. Um, I enjoyed it all. And it was a wonderful journey. And for me, religion, my spirituality is a journey. And I know that might not be the same for everybody. When I first left, I wanted the truth, you know. And I went to several Christian churches. And unfortunately, within the churches, they were fighting within themselves that they had greater truth. When I went to this church, they said, we're charismatic. And unless you have the gifts, you, you know, of speaking in tongues and, and this and that, then, then you weren't saved. And, you know, and then I went to more conservative ones. It's all Bible. There's no esoteric. There's no mysteries. It's just straight Bible. You know, your Calvary Baptist churches and, you know, whatever, uh, Seventh-day Adventism. But they were all okay. But my soul was looking for, for that connection. And anyway, uh, but, I, but I did enjoy those. But there's some people that just want Bible. That's all they want. I just want the Bible as it is. Well, there's plenty of those churches. They're all over. But find one. Find one that fits you. Find one that feeds you. You have to feed your soul. I mean, a, a person who is an atheist might come right into Christianity. Or a person who's a Christian might be, become atheist. It's, it's all over the place. Nobody's path. Your journey, your prodigal journey is your own. And you've got to, unfortunately, go it alone. And, but all I can say is find one that feeds your soul. I'm not going to tell you where to go because I can't tell you what to go. I don't know what you need. I had to dismantle my religious ideas and Jehovah's Witnesses. There was some bad stuff I learned. There's some bad stuff you learn in other religions. There's a lot of good stuff. You have to be sorting. But the, the, the beauty is is that, you're, that, that you'll want to be fed. You'll want to nourish yourself. And it could be just reading books in the privacy of your own home the rest of your life. It could be sitting in meditation and praying with God. It could be a number of things. And like I said, I'm not here to steer you. I would never steer you. I, it, you can't steer me. I can't steer you. I never wanted to be steered. I wanted to find out for myself. You're probably going to want to find out for yourself, your truth, and that's why this is your journey, your journey to your truth. And uh, again, I wish you well, but just know there's going to be a huge, and I know I said this in the beginning, there's going to be a void that's going to need to be filled. Take your time. You don't have to just jump into something else. I had lots of friends invite me to Christian churches. I went to 150 uh, Christian churches when I got out of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Some were very male domineering. Um, the women don't do anything. There were some that were just, you know, fighting between themselves. You know, we have it more truth. We have this. There's a hundred and some different compartments to Christianity. So I found that by, by traveling and going into the, the different religions. So just, you know, just look for your path of discovery. If you don't resonate with somebody else's idea and you know maybe the person you told you're leaving wants you to become what they are honor yourself continue to honor yourself just say no that's not for me right now and follow your heart and i promise you you will find the truth that sets you free you will find the connection as you need it you will be restored to health but do not lose to thine own self be true no matter who you come in contact with i had so many people in my life that wanted me to be in Course in Miracles, in this, in this spiritual community, in that spiritual community. I'm telling you, I had a bunch of people. And, and there was some frustration. You know, my boss wanted me to join his church, and he had, you know, all sorts of reasons why, and I didn't, and he was frustrated. My spiritual lady that helped me in the beginning wanted me to be fully invested in Course in Miracles. And I did look at Course in Miracles, but you know what? It wasn't for me. And so... Don't worry about it. From this point forward, to the nine self be true. To yourself be true. Honor your compass. You have a guide. There is a guide in you. We've all come into this earth at different places. I came in as a Jehovah's Witness. I didn't know any difference. Should I have stayed? Should I have stayed in there because I was born in there? No. I needed to shift and I did. 
And so from this point on, all I can say is go fill that void with whatever it is, books, spirituality, religion, whatever it is that you need, and I promise it'll be filled. For me, uh, I didn't find that end-all religion. Some people do. Some people land in something and they say, this is it. This is what I've been looking for. And God bless you if you find that truth that grounds you, sets you free, that heals you, and maybe there's transformation that's on levels I don't even understand. I just pray that you'll find that. And uh, But anyway, good luck on your journey. Maybe I shouldn't say luck, but farewell on your journey, and I hope you fare well, and I know you'll fare well. Thank you.